everyone and welcome back to my true crime channel. I hope you're all well. Today I want to discuss the Summer Wells disappearance again and the main point of my video today is to discuss why it has taken Summer's father Don so many weeks to tell us that his number one suspect is a man that he was working with that he sacked and he's convinced that he's the person that abducted Summer. So this information has come from an interview that Don recently gave to Chris from the interview room where he talks about there was a man that he was working with that wasn't doing a very good job, had some quite shady things going on in his life. Really, I'm not going to bore you with that because I'm sure you've heard about it. But basically, that Don sacks him. He can't work with him anymore. He's not professional. And he basically says that he sacks him. And the very next day, his daughter goes missing. So basically, how Don worded that during this interview with Chris was that like I said, the guy's not doing a good job. He sacks the guy. I think the guy's name's mentioned, but even if I knew what it was and I don't, I wouldn't be mentioning it on my channel because he potentially isn't involved. But he says, I fired him and then the next day, my daughter comes up missing. Comes up missing is quite weird. That didn't sit well with me. You know, it could have been, I fired him and the next day my daughter goes missing. Or the next day my daughter is missing comes up missing don't know why guys i don't like that i haven't figured out why yet i'm still trying because it can take a while with analyzing people's statements in true crime cases but comes up just doesn't doesn't sound right what is that in relation to i'll give you my thoughts further on that when i've given it more thought and i am still giving it thought but that doesn't sit right and then so he basically says I fired him, or I fired this guy, along these lines. The next day, my daughter comes up missing. That was my baby right there. <laughs> so sorry, I don't mean to sound like I'm laughing there because I'm not, but I'm. <laughs> my reason I'm doing that is that was my baby right there. Not that is my baby right there. Present tense. <laughs> no. We never really like the present tense, do we, Don Wells? You're using the past tense about your daughter again. So many red flags regarding your use of the past tense when your daughter is actually missing. Or is she missing? I can't get my head around this case. I mean, I'm still confused by a lot of it, but I do think the parents have got guilty knowledge. The fact that he says, that was my baby right there. More use of the past tense when you wouldn't say anything like that in the past tense if your daughter's missing. You just wouldn't do that. So that just doesn't sit well with me. You know, and the fact that None of this got mentioned weeks ago. Why is he only mentioning it now? So as I'm sure you'd all agree, guys, there's so much about Summer Wells' disappearance and Summer's case that doesn't add up. But why would someone's dad, some, a missing child's dad, think pretty much, you know, six weeks down the line after his daughter's gone missing to say, well, actually, you know, I sack someone at work and then the next day my daughter comes up missing. You'd be mentioning that in your first interview. Now, there's nothing to say that he didn't tell the police or the, the people investigating this case in America what had happened with this guy at work, and maybe he's only just choosing to tell us now, but I don't buy that. You would have said in your very first interview, I think a man that I worked with abducted my daughter because I fired him, and the very next day, my daughter comes up missing. Well, no. Don didn't tell us that from the start. Don's taken weeks and weeks after his daughter disappeared to tell us this information, which is just bullshit if you ask me. I don't think this guy was involved. Just because you get sacked doesn't mean you go nicking someone's child. I mean, come on. Why Don would think anyone would believe this, I don't know. And if that poor guy isn't involved, you know, Don's thrown him under the bus and it's dis disgusting. Something that was interesting is when he talked to Chris from the interview room about this guy that he sacked, he said he's, that he is his number one suspect, right? Bear that in mind, guys. Think back and listen to, because I have been again lately, over and over listening to them back. Listen to the early interviews with the parents. They don't know what happened other than it was an abduction. You know, the amount of times, because we've heard from, more from Don than we have Candace, but the amount of times Don says, I know it was an abduction, 100% an abduction. I knew immediately... I knew straight away that it was an abduction, but this guy doesn't get mentioned, really. He can't have been your number one suspect all along, which is what you tell Chris, if you don't tell anyone in the beginning of your daughter's disappearance about this guy's existence or the, the fact that you suspect him. 
really now all right we could think the police advised them against saying that and maybe don eventually weeks down the line thought hey i'm just going to call this guy out but you know the fact this guy is very unlikely to be involved it's a disgrace calling him out it's calling him out in my opinion to make you look less guilty to make candace look less guilty or to make it look like you have no guilty knowledge of what happened to your daughter when really i'm sorry to say but we all do know so I haven't really mentioned much, if at all, in my other videos, that there's this whole big thing about Don saying her car. Now, when he was talking about the abductor taking summer, he refers to the abductor or abductors, or at least one abductor, as her. He definitely says it. I heard it. It's not there. He definitely says her. I've listened to it many times now. He definitely says her. So it alludes that whoever took summer away took them in her car. Now, a lot of people have thought, is that grandma? Did grandma take Summer away? Let's pray that's true and that she's safe and well with the grandma. That would be the best outcome here. Sadly, I don't think that's true. I think what he was alluding is that Summer's took away in Candace's car. But to where? To meet him? I'm not sure, guys, but the whole thing with the Subaru and the truck I've mentioned in another video that I've done recently doesn't add up. The timeline of Don's day at work, the fact that he can't remember what time he got to work. He can't even remember if he had breakfast, but he knows he, he might have had breakfast, but doesn't remember where or what. You would remember. Everything about the day of your son or daughter's disappearance, no matter how old they are, but especially if they're a five-year-old child, is going to be ingrained on your brain. Believe me, I know. You would not forget this stuff. You just wouldn't. You'd know pretty much a rough time of when you got to work. And believe me, you'd remember if you stopped for breakfast. I said in my other video about it. Yeah, you might have just stopped for a snack or a sandwich. You might not have gone to a restaurant or a cafe and sat and eaten your breakfast. But you'd remember whether or not you actually stopped somewhere to buy breakfast. Not, I, I, yeah, well, I can't remember what time I got to work. And I might have had breakfast. That's so wishy-washy, so bullshitty. Let's just be honest. You know what time you got to work, Don. You know whether or not you had breakfast. You know really what time you were or weren't at work. And this is all just a big load of shit. So blaming the people at work or the guy from work because he got sacked is just obscene in my opinion. I think Don only went into work for a short time that day or, or for a period of time potentially until something happens to summer. Maybe from the morning until the early afternoon when something happens to summer. Then he comes home. That's what I believe. And the going back to work in the red car, the Subaru, was to build an alibi. That's my opinion, guys. I could be wrong. I know you're not all going to agree with me. And I, I wouldn't expect you to, but that's what I'm starting to believe here. The whole mentioning of the car, the truck over and over about which one did or didn't get used to go to work has always raised red flags. Now it seems clear why Sedan so could build his alibi. I mean, obviously, guys, I hope I'm wrong about this. I hope the parents aren't involved. I don't like to bash them. I like to remain neutral, but I am beginning to find that more difficult after covering this case for two months. I do believe they've got guilty knowledge. I believe they've been telling us lies all along. I'm not saying I know who did what. It could be that Summer came to harm in Candace's care while Don was at work, which is what I've always believed from the start, although I obviously could be wrong on that. But I do believe they're both involved in the cover-up to what level and what degree, I don't know. But the more Don speaks, the more he trips himself up, the more he contradicts himself, the more we all don't believe what he says. And it's no wonder he talks so much rubbish, he points the finger at everybody else other than him. Definitely wasn't his fault Summer went missing. Well, obviously, if he was at work when she went missing, it isn't his fault. It's more of Candace's fault. That's clear for everyone to see. But the amount of times he's blamed everyone other than him... You know, even his own sons, I've covered that in other videos recently that I've done on this case, but saying that his own sons left that basement door unlocked or didn't lock it and not getting Summer in from playing on time. That was in one of the first interviews that they did, if you remember that far back. You know, blaming the brothers for Summer's disappearance in a roundabout way. I mean, it's just a disgrace. The more I hear of Don, the more upset I get about all of this and the more I, I begin to wonder, and I don't like to, but I do... If summer's ever going to be found. I'm praying for that little girl to be found. I have been for two months and I will continue to pray for summer to be found. I hope I'm wrong on my thoughts on the parents. I always say that to you guys. I hope it turns out we're all wrong if, if we're in the same thinking uh, thought process of me that they are involved or they know what happened at least. I hope that's not true. 
I hope summer's off with her grandma, maybe, and, you know, perhaps they're trying to make money out of a faked disappearance. That would be the best scenario here. Obviously, it would be terrible if they've done that, but at least if it was a Shannon Matthews sort of case, a similar case like that happened here in the UK, where a mother hid her child within the base of a bed, sicko, drugged her and hid her in a base of a bed, tied her up for three weeks around a uh, sort of friend's house, I believe it was, or it might have been a relative... I need to cover that case, the case of Shannon Matthews. It's quite a few years old now, but basically the mother did that to make it like a Madeleine McCann so that they'd get loads of money into this fund, never sort of say the child was found and rinse the public, as we say in the UK, but rinse him, rinse the public for all they can, for all the donations, and then maybe miraculously Shannon then one day, you know, pops out of the bed and goes, here I am. The no. I hope that's not what's happened, but at least if they were trying to rinse the public, as I said, for money... You know, it is dishonest, it's fraudulent, it's terrible. But at least if that was the case and Summer was with her grandma, she'd still be alive. Right, anyway, guys, I am going to be covering some other cases soon. I've got quite a few cold cases on my list that I want to do. I don't always get that much time, which is why I'm making a lot of short videos about Summer at the moment, because I can fit them in around my other job. But I will be covering more than one case. I don't want to just cover summers for the next few months. Obviously, if it stays an active case, I am going to be looking into it definitely on a weekly basis. But I do want to start reintroducing other cases into my channel just so that I don't become a channel only about one case. And there are many other cases that I want to cover, especially a lot of British cases. But there are quite a few other American cases that I'm going to look into. And not only that, there are some other cases from the rest of the world that I hope to be covering later this year. Well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming back and watching my videos. Thank you so much for subscribing if you have. I really appreciate your support. I always love knowing your views. So please, as always, pop your comments below. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know what you think about the fact Don took this long to mention that this guy is his number one suspect. Isn't it a bit sus of Don or suspicious of Don to announce his number one suspect this many weeks down the line? And the fact that this took, what, about five or six weeks for Don to tell anyone about this? You know, we never heard about this guy at work being sacked before and how he's the number one suspect. Why has it taken Don so long to tell us? I think we can all figure out why it's taken Don so long to tell us about his number one suspect, because there is no number one suspect. Potentially now it's looking like Don and Candace are the number one suspects here. He wants to take the sort of shit away from him, move it away, move it on to the guy that he works with to make him look innocent, when really, whether or not he did hurt his daughter, he does really know what happened to her. Well, anyway, guys, I hope you're all well. I hope you're taking care of one another. I hope you're having a great day, wherever it is that you are in this big world of ours. And as always, I'll be back very soon with you with another true crime video. Bye for now.